Now to further explain how Democrats are destroying America's democracy, senior advisor to Donald Trump, Jason Miller, is in studio. Jason, really good to have you. How's the president doing with, with this insane judgment? He seems so resilient. How's he, how's he dealing with it? Well, he's doing great, and I think he's really feeding off the energy he's getting from supporters. We saw him at these last couple of rallies in Michigan, then again in South Carolina. I don't know how he does it. He just keeps on going, and I think he really is looking at this. If he doesn't save the country now, we're never going to have a chance to get it back. Those comments that we saw from Letitia James and this whole media tour that she's doing, first of all, the only reason for her to be doing a media tour is try to help Joe Biden for 24. If Joe Biden were leading, Letitia James would be going to the beach. She'd be on vacation. But instead, she's trying to get President Trump because this thing's political all the way. So... Um, Lena Habas was on the show and, and told us that the, the way this is going to play out is that he's going to appeal, but he's got to come up with this somewhere around 400 or 400 plus million dollars posted to a bondsman, which means if he loses the appeal, they keep the money. But to get them, listen, billionaires, billionaires like Trump, like even Elon Musk probably couldn't come up with a big chunk of money right, right away. Remember Elon Musk bought X or bought Twitter? He had to sell Tesla stock to buy it. He's worth $350 billion, but he's still... Had, so a lot of assets are, are you know, on paper, in buildings, uh, in, in other things. It's, is he going to be able to come up with 400 million bucks in less than 30 days? So I'll leave the specifics on that to the legal team. That's not something that I should go and venture into. But very clearly with this, President Trump is very much realize this is political, nothing's going to slow him down. He's going to go and win this election, and that's nothing's going to stop him from that. I want to go back to another point that Letitia James made in her comments there, when she was saying that, there's, uh, that this is not some uh, victimless crime. So they're trying to shake down President Trump to have to send money to the state of New York, not to some victim, basically going to the government coffers, where Governor, Governor Hochul has already been beaten up for funny accounting math. And at the same time that Letitia James is saying New York is doing great, the governor of New York is saying, hey, we've lost a lot of population, businesses, business owners, please don't move, please don't leave. They're destroying that state. Yeah, so Kevin Leary um, says, Mr. Wonderful, I guess he's from Shark Tank, says, I wouldn't do business in New York. I think a lot of people are expressing, I saw... Um, you know, the, the Wolf of Wall Street guy, I can't remember, Jason, whatever his name is, um, I, it's saying the same thing. This is going to be a thing. I mean, if you can go after, forget Trump, if you can go after someone that you don't like for their political persuasion, their political opinions, and you're in a state or a city that needs to raise money to house illegals, what better way to do it than if they get away with it here, they're going to do it elsewhere. I, this is something I think is going to hurt New York, but also, is this helping Trump with the voters? Well, yes, it does help him politically. We've seen his poll numbers continue to go up and up. But it's a terrible reflection on society and the country when you see this political persecution, which is exactly what it is. It's further, it's dividing the country into the blue states and the red states, pushing it further apart. And really, a lot of the people in New York, the ones who haven't left, are only because maybe they don't have the means or don't have the ability to. But you see a lot of people leaving New York and going further to the states that you said that have no state income tax, but even moving to neighboring states, Connecticut, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, because they see what's happening in New York. And Eric, you walk the streets of New York right now, it is very dangerous. First of all, the entire place smells like marijuana. It's just, it's disgusting. The trash, the graffiti, the you homeless. You know what else, too? For the first time in, since I've, I've been living in New York or going to New York for 45 years, first time, there's, there's businesses, there's, everything's shut down. There, you can walk the street, a, a very popular, Third Avenue, for example, Probably two-thirds of the storefronts are vacant. Yeah, and how does Letitia James have time to sit in a courtroom all day? Why doesn't she do anything about the streets of New York or all the other crime that's going on? It tells you this whole thing is political. And the other thing, too, I mean, Letitia James is basically just a Joe Biden henchman at this point. Yeah, so I saw a number, um, Alvin Bragg, the, uh, the, the uh, prosecutor in, in New York City, he reduced almost a thousand felonies last year, highest ever on record in your uh, 958 felonies. He reduced to misdemeanors, meaning people committed dangerous crimes, violent, dangerous crimes, and he reduced them so they could walk out, just literally walk out of the uh, out of the hold, out of the hold. Meanwhile, they did the opposite with Trump, didn't they? Some of this stuff was misdemeanor stuff. Some of this stuff was rarely, if ever, prosecuted before, but they jacked it up, not a crime or felony, but they jacked it up to make it seem as dangerous as a violent criminal on the streets in New York.
And it's so bad, you look at some of the other legal prognosticators, the, the pundits that are, whether it be the Dan Abrams, the Ellie Honigs, people like that, all completely hammering Bragg and say this is a complete joke, it's a novel theory, this thing should be thrown out, it's a terrible case for them to even be trying to push, but they're so triggered, they're so determined to try to stop President Trump because he's leading in the polls, they're not going to stop for anything. Let's pivot a little bit to South Carolina. I, I saw the USA Today poll come out yesterday, had him up by 28 points, almost doubling Nikki Haley's support. What the heck, Jason, what do you guys think she's up to? Why, what internally, when you guys talk about these things, why should she even bother? She's going to get embarrassed in her own state. Yeah, it's not a good look to lose your own state that badly. And Nikki Haley could have stepped out, said she's going to support President Trump, get behind him, try to beat Joe Biden, have a political career somewhere down the in the future, down the road. Instead, she's basically followed the Joe Biden Democrat talking points, working with Reid Hoffman and all the liberal Democrat donors. And now she's echoing all of their talking points to attack President Trump. I think Nikki Haley is done. She clearly can't identify a single state that she could win in the primary. She's losing to Joe Biden in Texas. If heaven forbid she was ever in a general election, I think Nikki's done for 28 and beyond. Who's supporting her campaign, do you think? Democrats. You, Demo you believe that? Democrats I mean, it's, it's, and never Trumpers. It's something that we hear and we talk about, but you really think Democrats are, are behind this because they would rather see her up against Biden than him? Or just they're just trying to, I don't know, throw more question or, or doubt on, on the Trump campaign? Well, they think they can win with Nikki Haley. They think Joe Biden can beat Nikki Haley. That's what this is all about. Do you think Reid Hoffman, for one moment, do you think Reid Hoffman gave Nikki Haley money because he wants her to be the next president of the United States? No. No, but the, other, a, the contrary could be they want her to keep chipping away at, at Trump. I mean, he's got to spend money. So he, the, you, you generally well, have to defend it's, yourself. It's, you it's, to a, spend it's money. TDS. Trump derangement syndrome, but also if somehow they were to get Nikki as the general election nominee, they know that they can beat her. And that's the real problem with Nikki is when you can't identify a single state where you're going to win, then why are you still in the race? Why are you doing this? You know, Nikki Haley made an interesting point in her remarks the other day where she said, people call me a never Trumper. I'm not a never Trumper. Well, Eric, if you have to come out and say that you're not a never Trumper, you're a never Trumper. Yeah. Very interesting. Last night I watched Trump on with uh, Laura Ingram, and the, the way they set it up was here the audience. We pulled the audience to the town hall, pulled the audience in their top choices for VP, where and she rattled off DeSantis, she rattled off Ramaswamy, uh, Tim Scott, and Byron Donalds, and maybe one other. And she turned and said, "Trump, are all those uh, on your short list?" And he said, "Yes." And I found that very fascinating because she said all of them, and he said yes, and maybe some others. But the one that struck me, and the reason why it strikes me is because I've had Ron DeSantis on a bunch of times. I've asked him, I've asked the boss, I've asked uh, Trump himself, would you pick Ron DeSantis as your VP? And in the, there was a bit of a pushback from both sides, but I do believe, I think the, my audience would agree, that a Trump DeSantis ticket would be unstoppable. It wouldn't matter who they put up against you. Your thoughts on what he's thinking? My thoughts, I think President Trump has some good options that Laura pointed out. Also, there's some really good men and women she didn't name that are good options as well. President Trump's going to be able to pick from anybody to go and do this. And whoever he picks is going to be the next VP of the United States. And potentially down the road, we'll see after that. But I do think he has better options than Ron DeSantis. But he has, he has some good ones he can pick from. Like? Oh, of course, I'm not going to get myself <laughs> fired uh, by, by joining your show. Have some good <laughs> options, but I can't lean in I too to much. Ask. I got to ask. Don't put me on the spot I like will that. tell you from, from my, my conservative standpoint, when you have a Trump DeSantis ticket, you've covered all the, all the people who might or thought about voting, uh, including independents and moderates and whatnot. You, you get them all. But that's just me, folks. I'm going to leave it right there. Jason Miller, appreciate you. Love having you in studio as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.